Cassie and I am the CPA Marketing Chair and today I'm bringing you one more time Alexandra O'Connell, your resident wordsmith because Alexandra has yet another tip for us that is so, so useful. Hello, Alexandra. Hi, Cassie. Hi, How okay, doing? I'm doing well. I'm excited about this tip. Here's the thing about this tip. So you got your edits back mm -hmm. from your editor. Yeah. What do we do with them? <laughs> yeah. What do we do with these edits that we receive from you? Yeah, this is actually a, like, a question. I don't get it phrased so much as a question. It's more like, deer in the headlights kind of a <laughs> look if I'm seeing the person face to face uh, and so a lot of people have this question right getting your manuscript back from your editor is wonderful except then you're like I there's marks everywhere and I don't know what I'm doing so uh, there's a few things I recommend okay right take a deep breath yes first exhale, of all exhale uh, make sure that you read all the way through okay. so don't freak out from the first couple of pages read it all the way through and see if there's something that coming, is coming up for you. Uh, are you pushing back against some of these suggestions and changes? Uh, are you confused by some of the things that your editor is saying? Make a note, make some notes for yourself, like what is coming up, like real just top line what's coming up for you. And then the number one place to start is usually to ask your editor first off and say, hey, if they haven't told you already, what is there like one or two particular things, are there one or two particular things that stood out to them oh. as like a common theme okay. that you can address? So like what is like a big, one or two big items that your editor has already seen? So number one, ask your editor. Number two, group the changes together by type, right? So if you're writing mm. fiction, you might have character, you might have a whole bunch of changes that relate to a character or characters. Okay. That's a whole thing. So Joe, all of the changes that pertain to Joe, that's one category. All of the changes that say uh, your descriptions, oh something goodness. about your descriptions, right? Yes. So just group them, separate them out, okay. right? Uh, the changes where uh, you, if you have nonfiction, for example, research is an issue, uh, you know, <laughs> that could come up. Um, maybe you use a lot of passive voice. Maybe you use, so I have a couple of soapboxes that I always get on, mm -hmm. and uh, they include uses of anything that includes anything, any word that includes the word thing in it, and any it. Oh, really? I think both of those can be, they should be replaced okay. almost 100% of the time. Oh, wow. Wow. And that is like a basic change, which is very different from anything that has to do with Joe's character or any research that you might have had to do for your book. Separate them out. So one, talk to your, well, one, read through, <laughs> two, talk to your editor, three, group the changes, and then prioritize them, it's four, is the final thing. So just, and then do them by group. So you'll be going through your manuscript several times over. Don't try to make every change on page five in every group of oh, changes. Oh, I see what you mean, okay. Because as soon as you start making one set of changes, it's gonna affect how the rest of the book fits together. Yeah. So stick with one at a time, and try to start with the biggest picture change, which has the most trickle down effects. So it's better, for example, to start with either you need some more research or you need to develop Joe a bit better before you start worrying about the things and the it's, for example, okay. or your use of passive voice. Wow, that's, so that's a lot. that's my recommendation. Yes. And the thing that can often happen, it, depending on how your editor sends the manuscript back to you, most of us these days work electronically. Mm -hmm. So it's a Microsoft Word. I use Microsoft Word showing track changes. Okay. And I always send back yeah. two versions of the manuscript to the author. Yeah. So one shows all of the markup, and that's the one that looks really terrifying, <laughs> where you see like the blue bubbles and the red yeah, bubbles. Yes, that is lines, true. Lines, things that have been stricken out and things yes, that have been added. exactly. And then one I send clean with all the changes accepted. So oh, so you send one, I send one as you have as, changed as it. As I have changed it. Oh. So that you can, it's easy, it's much easier on the eyes. And it's the place that I recommend most writers start. Okay. Is to look at that one first and read it. It should sound like you. It should make sense to you. And then the markup version is basically a reference for you to see, okay, well, what changes actually did take place on this page. Okay. You can reference it there. Oh my gosh. So you do make the changes yourself too, as Sometimes, the editor. Sometimes, yes. So okay. if we're doing, there's different levels of editing, as I mentioned in my other tip, if that shows up um, on your feed. Uh, there are different kinds of editorial changes that I can make, and when we're talking developmental editing, which is really big picture, like, is the book any good? Is it interesting? Is it fun? Does it move well, like, good pace throughout? 
is the ending any good? Is the beginning any good? Really big picture stuff. Most of the time I do less hands-on okay. changes into those types of manuscript okay. reviews because it'll be questions. I'll say things like, I really feel like chapter two is where your story kicks off. Okay. And it's my preference, my recommendation that maybe we just get rid of everything in chapter one or move a lot of chapter one material elsewhere. Oh my goodness, that hurts. That right? hurts. It's gonna be painful. And then I may or may not actually make some changes. Okay. And then when we get to things like the line edit where we're saying sentence by sentence, mm -hmm. then you make. I can sometimes get my hands pretty dirty. And that's something that we will talk about okay. with the author, like how much they want me to dig in there. Wonderful. And how much they would prefer me to make recommendations that they implement themselves. Great. So. All yeah. right, all right, we are at five minutes and a little more. So let's do this. Thank you so much for these tips. I really was just paying attention so closely because it's important to know as authors what you do as the editor. So thank you so much. Alexandra, where can we find you? You can find me on my website at alexandraoconnell.com. Again, that's two N's and two L's in my last name. Uh, and Twitter at AOC Writes writing and uh, you can okay, find me on yeah. LinkedIn too I'm uh, pretty active there as well so okay shoot me a question and if there's really terminology is still freaking you out my website I define all the different terms so you can see what that is for yourself right okay. there Okay. well thank you so much absolutely all right guys we'll see you next week with another five minute tip